The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship on this second Sunday in Lent. Um, <clears throat> we are moving already quickly through the Lenten season. It, if, if we remember every year we talk about how fast Lent goes and then we forget about that by the next year and it continues to just barrel right on through. Uh, so, so do know that we, we will um, we will approach Holy Week quicker than we think every time. Um, so as we begin this, this Lenten journey, um, we will move through the readings of the, of the narrative lectionary, today hearing uh, the, the parable of the laborers in, in the vineyard. Uh, so that's where, that's where we will be stopping on, on, today's, on today's movement through the Lenten readings. Um, Gayla is the liturgist today, and I'm going to ask her to take us through announcements as well. Good morning. Um, on Tuesday the 11th, the prayer group will meet. Will that be here, Jean, or your house? You're at Jean's house. Um, Lenten services this Tuesday will be at Union Street Arts, which is the churros and chocolate. Oh, it's it. Oh, okay. Um, and it's at 118 East Union Street. For those of you that were here last Tuesday at the service, it was really great. There were... Um, you know, a lot of people here, and it was just really a good service. The meal was good. So if you can go that night, try. Um, deacons are also meeting Friday. Okay. Wednesday the 8th, yeah. Oh, Wednesday the 8th. That was just done to confuse me. Yeah. Okay. Here's the big one. Sunday, March 12th, Daylight Savings Time. Woohoo! Just going to announce it ahead of time. Thanks be to God. <laughs> And I just want to say hi to Mona. How you doing? Nice to see you. Okay. Kayla. Ready for it? Yes. Um, I have a big announcement here. It's important that everybody uh, realizes this. We are in the process of getting all the keys changed, all the outside doors. So if you have a key to an outside door and you come, I, I don't know when we're going to get started on it, but um, if you come and all of a sudden you're Lot key doesn't work. Uh, it's because because we've changed them. Um, it takes a lot to change the keys on the panic bar doors. And so, but the guy says we, he can do all that in one day when he does, when he gets to going on it. So, and it has to be somebody here to do it. So I have to I'll have to be here when or or Colleen will have to be here. Somebody has to be here when when he changes all this. And then and then we're in the process of. <coughs> You turn in your old key, and I'll give you a new key. So just be aware that that's happening. Are there any other announcements? Susie wanted me to let everyone know that we got 29 blood units at the blood drive on Friday. Nice. So awesome work. That's great. I know I was here for just a couple of minutes yesterday, and they were lined up. It was great for Friday. Okay, let's wish, go ahead. I think Susie would, would also probably like us to remind everyone um, that the next three Sundays, not, not, not this Sunday, but the, the next three Sundays, we will be having um, a Lenten dev devotional fellowship after worship. Um, I'm gonna be leading one of those, Zach is gonna be leading one of those, and Dan Seelock is gonna be leading one of those. Uh, so j just know that, that those are going to be a thing. They will go along with, um, with the Lenten devotionals that we've been walking through um, from the beginning of the season. So just a reminder that those will be happening. Any others? Okay, let's worship God. All right, let us worship God. Re remember that our, that our introit um, for, for all of Lent is, is bless the Lord. So let me sing through that once again so you, so you can kind of remember it and then sing with me. Bless the Lord, my soul. And bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord my soul who leads me into life bless the Lord my 
soul and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into life. Amen. Let's join together in our call to worship. For 40 days and 40 nights, we observe this Lenten season. As we see the injustice all around us, we see how much work is left to be done. Let us follow Jesus through the wilderness this Lent, examining what work needs to be done and how God is calling us to do it. Let us, Let us worship, worship God, God knowing, knowing that God, that God works, works alongside us for justice, for justice freedom, freedom, and, and peace. peace. Let's join together in the hymn of praise number 630, Ferris Lord Jesus. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But when we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's join together in the prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, 
word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. And then a small Lenten moment. Um, <clears throat> so, if you've been following along with the, the Lenten devotion, which um, look like this, if you have not seen them uh, out in the narthex, um, the... Um, the start of this week, um, the the fo the focus of this set of Lenten devotionals is examining our pain to live with healing, and this week starts starts with lo looking at the pain of shame, uh, and I, I was thinking how appropriate the title of this Lenten devotional, uh, examining our pain to live with healing, is in the situation that we are currently in. Like I feel like. What Gayla and I are both saying dovetails in, into each other so well because it's, these are talking a lot about digging into the things that don't always feel good so that we can move through it and, and heal from it. And that is a lot of what you'll see the focus on um, this week. So if, if, you, if you choose to, to go through that devotional, I, I think there's some, some really really, really valuable stuff in there. Uh, one, one of the examinations says, listen to the shame messages you have heard or told yourself. Breathe. Notice thoughts and feelings that arise. Imagine yourself being pieced together in your mother's womb. Picture God smiling over your birth and cradling you in divine arms. Bask in the knowledge that you have been claimed by God and blessed as worthy of love. Like, th there's, there's a, a lot of really deep holy work that can be done when we start examining those sorts of things. Uh, so, so I would really encourage you to, to go through those and we'll be talking through um, a lot of that in, in, our, um, in, our Linton, in our Linton devotional discussions after worship the next three Sundays. Uh, so I would really encourage you to do that. And if we need to print more of those or send any out electronically, we can easily do that.
such as the fool that turned all those good hearts away. God knows what is hiding in this world of little consequence behind the tears inside the lies. And slowly dying sunsets God knows what is hiding In our weak and drunken hearts I guess the loneliness came knocking No one needs to be alone People help the people And if you're homesick Give me your hand and I'll be cold as a stone and rich as the fool that turned all those good hearts away. People help the Friends, that brings us to our gospel reading for today, which comes from Matthew's gospel. There is a typo here that is completely and totally my fault, because it is what I sent to Colleen. Um, th this is actually from the 20th chapter of Matthew's gospel, verses 1 through 16, not 1 through 6. Those would be six very long verses, if, if, if that were the case. So, so this is Matthew 20, 1 to 16. Listen now for a word from God. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. After he agreed with the workers to pay them a denarian, he sent them out into his vineyard. Then he went out around nine in the morning and saw others standing there in the marketplace doing nothing. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I'll pay you whatever is right. And they went. Again around noon and then around three in the afternoon, the landowner did the same thing. Around five in the afternoon, he went and found others standing around and said to them, why are you just standing around here and doing nothing all day long? Because nobody has hired us, they replied. He responded, you also go into the vineyard. When the evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to the manager, call the workers and give them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and moving finally on to the first. Those who were hired at five in the afternoon came and each one received an errand. Now, when, the, when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarian. When they received it, they grumbled against the landowner. Th these who were hired last worked one hour, and they received the same pay as we did, even though we had worked the whole day in the hot sun. But the landowner replied to each of them, friend, I did you no wrong. Didn't I agree to pay you a denarian? Take what belongs to you and go. I want to give you, I want to give to this one who was hired last the same I give to you. Don't I have the right to do what, what I want with what belongs to me? Or are you resentful because I'm generous? So those who are last will be first, and those who are first will be last. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our hymn of inspiration is hymn number 36, For the Fruit of All Creation.
may be seated. Our second reading um, is a small portion of Psalm 16. Listen now for yet another word from God. You, Lord, are my portion, my cup. You control my destiny. The property lines have fallen beautifully for me. Yes, I have a lovely home. I will bless the Lord who advises me. Even at night I am instructed in the depths of my mind. I always put the Lord in front of me. I will not stumble because the Lord is on my right side. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you join me in prayer? Holy One, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Do we ever think about what is fair? I feel like that's a discussion that we have a lot in various contexts. We want to talk about how someone is treated better than we are by a person or an organization. How sometimes we'll even acknowledge that we are treated better than somebody else is by a a person or an organization. We see these things around us. We squabble, just like we heard in today's gospel reading, we squabble about the fairness of pay. We squabble about the fairness of of wage. We we have folks who are angry that fast food workers would be paid a living wage as if that's a bad thing. That, first of all, makes no sense to me, and I'm, I'm going to own up to that right now, that the idea that everyone would have a living wage and the access and access to a wage that would allow them to live functionally within society just seems like basic common sense. And it also seems to jive a lot with what Jesus is saying in this parable, but there's so much more to this parable. Let us remember that when we approach the parables, it's really easy to try to make all of the parables an exact allegory. Now, if you, if you go back to high school English talking about allegories, remember that if, if you're in an allegorical situation, every character and sometimes even every, every place, every entity in that story has an exact representation. That 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 every, everything is is being put together. So so if you were if you were going to look at this parable um, in a purely allegorical way, then it would be very easy to say, okay, the the landowner is God who who br- brings brings people into the fold throughout throughout time throughout history, you know, all of this, and and then everyone receives the same reward and. There's really nothing wrong with looking at this parable in in that way. That ma- that makes sense. There's a, a lot to be said there if if we draw that comparison. But we can also look at this parable from a deeper perspective and see ourselves and God and others in many of the different roles here. And, and this is a very, very, it's a, it becomes a harder parable to wrestle with when, when you start moving the chess pieces around in, in the story. Because, yes, the, the first way that really jumps out is to put God in the position of, of, of the landowner and knowing that we are all given the same inheritance. Jesus talks about that. Paul talks about that a lot in, in the letters to the, to the early churches, that we are given 
this adoption, this inheritance in Jesus Christ, and that that salvation is for all, and and salvation for one is not greater than, than salvation for the other. And so it is really easy to say, well, well, I've been doing this whole Jesus thing for decades and decades and decades, and so my inheritance should be more than the person who just figured out about this whole kingdom of heaven thing two weeks ago. But God is very clear in, in, the, in the words of Jesus, in the work of Jesus, and then in, in other in, inspired writings and, and discussions and things that that's just not how God works. That there is, there is equity in the gospel, there is justice in the gospel. I don't know if, if you have seen, I, I've seen this for years, um, go around as you know, Facebook posts and, 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 and Instagram posts where you see the three children, it's a, it's a cartoon drawing and you see the three children standing outside the, the fence of a baseball game and, and all, all the kids are equally short so, so, that, so that, that's not really uh, brought up in the, the actual different heights of, of the children. But, but one of them is, is, stand, is standing on, on no box, one of them is standing on one box, and one of them is standing on two boxes. And then there are windows that move that around in, in different ways and show that, you know, that if everyone is the same height, then, the, then these different boxes do different things. But if people are at different heights, which other subsequent pictures show, then the di the different levels make a different a different situation. So the um, the child who is taller may only need one box, whereas a child who is shorter would need two to be able to see the the whole situation. And so to give everybody the exact same thing doesn't always put us where we need to be. But but what we see here in, in this parable is that, is that God gives what is needed for those who are there. And the really interesting thing about the landowner is that I, I see a lot of humor in this parable, and I, I loved the way that the, um, that the common English uh, trans translated this parable. Um, I use the, the Common English Bible here. Um, I love, is it? Yeah, right here. Um, again, again around noon, and then at three in the afternoon, he did the same thing. Around five in the afternoon, he went out and found others standing around and said to them, why are you just standing around here doing nothing all day long? <laughs> and, because no one hired us, they replied. And he responded, well, then you also go into the vineyard. Vineyard for everyone. You know, it's, it, it, I, I kind of see Oprah. And you go to the vineyard, and you go to the vineyard, and you go to the vineyard. And, 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 and every, everybody goes to the vineyard. And, and in, in this translation, the, the landowner seems really excited to send the people in, into the vineyard at, at, at the different times. And what struck me, again, when looking at this from the point of view of, of God in the landowner's position this time was the, the exuberance and joy of bringing people into the work and knowing that really a kind of the more the merrier situation of let's, let's bring everybody in to get done what needs to get done. And the landowner is also exuberant about giving people the wage for the day, giving them, you know, much like as, as we ask in, in the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our, da our daily bread, the, the ways to function th throughout their life. And the landowner is, is very excited about that. But if, if we move this around and we put, and we, and we change our perspective a little bit, if, if we look at ourselves as the landowner, 
and we look at the priorities, what do we send what do we send in first? What do we send in second? What do we send in? But we're going to have the same amount of energy at the end of the day to give to to all of those things. And so where where do those priorities fall? That's another way we can we can look look at this story. And then we can also easily see the broader systemic things. Uh, like I said, when we look at economic justice in our in our current society, and we we see we see people who work a forty hour week or more who can't afford rent for a small apartment because the system is set up that way and that is not okay and here here we see Jesus using a story to make a huge point about the way that society functions the way that society moves and so I'm going to ask you to talk to me a little bit this morning where do you see yourself in this story or where do you where do you see God in this story in your or our current situation where, where do you see this as being relevant right now Excellent timing motorcycle. We, we all need to own, own our needs in, in this situation. I think that's, that's really huge. Absolutely. Right. Well, and, and also, I, I, I think that's, that's very true. And then another thing, and I, I was going to bring this up later, but it, it, just, it just came into my head again when you said that, that really um, struck out at me last night was, you know, it's really easy to say that these people that came in, especially like the ones who came in at five in the afternoon, you know, that they really, you know, did not spend nearly as much time in the vineyard. But they weren't there early in the morning, and we don't know why. We don't know, and we don't know in this story what kept them from being there looking for work early in the morning. Were there, were there things at home that were pressing? Is there illness that they were attending to? Is there, you know, like, what, what is their situation? And we, and we all too often, when we, when we look at situations like that, just, just like you said, Bob, it, it's, it's really easy to see, you know, the folks who are super productive all day long and the people that can just churn out stuff o o over and over again in there, and, and we're always very happy that they're around because that, that's very, very helpful. And then there are the folks, though, that come in for shorter amounts of time and do bursts of work that are also incredibly helpful, but we don't know why they weren't there or, you know, or earlier in the, in the day. And I, and I think this is a story that really invites us to remember that we don't always know the whole story of, of, of what's going on. And yet it's still really easy to get irritated at, at those who it seems like have done less or, you know, and, and so I, I, think, I think it's something that we can all, um, that we can all relate to. Gene, you look like you're Perkin. What, what you got over there? <laughs> right. And, well, and, and, and honestly, th this goes right in, 
into, I think it's two parables later where that ex exact verse comes out. So, so the, this is what Je Jesus is setting up. And, and that goes, <coughs> Bob alluded to that point too. <coughs> they agreed to the denarian, every one of them, at the different time that, the, that they went in. And so the landowner is also very upfront with, with, with what's coming and, and with, with the, the wage that is happening. And, um, and one of the commentaries that, that I looked at on, on this text talked about the fact that, that a denarian was seen to be a living wage. Like, like the, the, the value of a denarian was a pretty standard daily wage. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't super low, it wasn't super high. You know, it, it, economists would probably call it the median wage or, 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 or something like that. But it was seen to be a, a fair and, and livable situation. And so, right. And it, 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 especially as they keep going in later, we don't see him say, go, go in at five in the afternoon and I'll give you the denarian. And then, and then, then they, all, they all end up with that very, very good point. Very good point. That's, that's a huge piece. <laughs> that... It talks a lot, this parable talks a lot about the worth of, of the person. When, when, you, when you start looking, looking deeper into the situation, because somebody works more or is able to accomplish more, they are not worth more than the folks who are not able to do as much. Their life, their value, their dignity is not, does not hinge on how much they are able to produce. They are, they are valued for who they are and they all are seen as worth enough. What you got, Marna? That, that's, that's also true, that there's no favoritism in, in, in this situation. Because, again, it would be very easy for the landowner to be like, y'all have been here since five in the morning. Here, take three denarii. You know, like, and, and, and you just came in an hour ago, you take half a denarii. You know, like, that, that, that would be very easy to do, and that does not happen here. Yeah, there's no favoritism. And to me, that, that, is, such, that is such a key point of the gospel. And I think we have to go further and say, not only is there no favoritism, but we are all so highly valued that the ability to quantify that isn't even thinkable. So as we continue to move through the rest of this Lenten season, let us remember that the eternal cry of that's not fair may have a really, really deeper meaning. And as we, as we look at what it means to be fully valued and accepted in the kingdom of God, May we know that we serve a God of abundance and there's always enough. There's always, there's always more than enough. And just because someone else has received their share does not mean there is less for us. So let us remember that there is more than enough to go around and we are called to be part of that distribution. Thanks be to the triune God. Amen.
Friends, our affirmation of faith this morning is the Apostles' Creed. Join with me as we say what it is that we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. The third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and sitted at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, just as we have talked about fair and equitable wages, we know that we are given much by God. At this point, let us gather our tithes and offerings and our prayers and our gifts of our lives before God this morning. Join me in prayer. Try in one today. We bring a lot of joys and concerns. We hear of various needs. And we know that this is just the tip of the iceberg. We know that this time of year can feel daunting and overwhelming as so many things are going on, as so many needs and wants and fears and concerns are around us. It's easy to get overwhelmed and bogged down. Help us to remember that you are in each and every one of these situations with us. You weep with us, you laugh with us. You smile with us, you are overcome with joy with us. 
as we go through this Lenten season, remind us that Emmanuel is not a term reserved for Advent. But that you, as God with us, walk through each and every one of our human emotions that you have experienced on a very real level. For these needs that have been expressed, move in each of them in your way and help us to know how we can be your hands and feet. For this family of faith, we pray your blessings as we discern your will and way in this time. We know that you have powerful mission and ministry opportunities ahead for us, as you always do. We know that you are always up to new things, and we ask that you help us to be ready for those and to see those as you begin to move. We give you thanks and praise in all things, Holy One. We offer this prayer in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who teaches us to pray, our Father in heaven, how be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, our closing hymn is necessary when you preach the text that we heard this morning. Our closing hymn is number 300, They'll Know We Are Christians By Our Love.
Friends, as we go out from this service of worship this day, go knowing that in the company of the triune God, there is always enough. There is always more than enough. There is enough for all of us to experience the fullness and wholeness of the grace and love of God. There is enough for us to share that with others and know that there will always be more to go around. So know that there is enough and that you are enough. And nothing in life or death can separate us from that possibility. And that cannot be taken away from us in any way because it is freely given by the love of God that comes to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen. Bless the Lord, my soul, and bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, who leads me into love. Bless the Lord my soul bless God's holy name bless the Lord my soul who leads us into love bless the Lord my soul and bless God's holy name, bless the Lord my soul.